بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم and Mahmoud, Mahmoud, the Ansari podcast. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Thanks for coming, man. Thank you, thank you. Moses the comic, thank you for coming, man. I Writer, professor, Ex actor. You know, I was just thinking. Business owner, philanthropist, if you will. I was just thinking I should have written down what you do so I could I could do the whole introduction. But you do a lot of things, man. Mashallah, Allahumma yeah. barik. Uh, yeah, may Allah man. bless you more and more. It's a beautiful setup, everything that you're doing. Um, I've been following the podcast for all 50 episodes, okay? <laughs> all 50 I've seen. And this is the 51st, so I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you for coming, man. I appreciate mm -hmm. you. So we were talking before we even started recording about the work we're trying to do and, and some of the goals that we're trying to accomplish as, as Muslims and as you as a Muslim African-American growing up in this country. Um, but I'd love to hear a little bit about your background. Mm. And what is, what is your background? I'm Egyptian. You're Egyptian. So you had a completely different upbringing culturally than, than I did. I'm, I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. We're in a city of brotherly love here, you know. Um, well, my parents are from Egypt. They're I from Egypt. I was born in Maryland. But yeah, exactly. I okay. have a completely but culturally, different, that's what exactly. I mean. Culturally, you had a completely different upbringing. You know, environmentally, we could, we could have grown up even on the same block and had two different upbringings. Culturally, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, and so I was always interested in that aspect of our identities, how sometimes we're identified by our cultures and what we're exposed to. So, you know, I grew up in a, a black Muslim household. You know, my parents were born and raised Christian, but converted and were a part of that first kind of the, the establishment of uh, black Islam and Islam in Philadelphia. What actually. made your parents convert? You said when? What, what made them? Um, I guess it's, it's so fascinating. I was talking to someone today actually about, you know, that journey of, of course, we know Allah put Islam in our heart, but kind of like, you know, what, what did it for them? And um, my father's backstory is kind of, you know, some, I guess, stereotypical quintessential and some just like, I'm going to write a movie on my dad one day, first and foremost. Wow. My dad passed in 2010. May Allah be pleased with him. Right. Um, but my father, you know, was like one of 10 children, grew up. Um, you know, born in 45, 1945, you know, impoverished communities and, and one of 10 children. It wasn't much to do back then. You know, kids were outside, you know, growing up, even in my generation, we played outside. Everything wasn't inside on the computers. Um, and my father went from, um, as a teenager, went to Vietnam, you know, got drafted into the services. It wasn't a lot of opportunities, you know, for black, you know, men at that time. So he went to the services, was, was, um, and he was a Marine. He went to Vietnam, Purple Heart recipient, honorable discharge, the whole nine yards, got out of the war and just there wasn't a lot of opportunities for veterans at that time like it is today, especially not for black ones. So he wound up, you know, he was a knucklehead just before he was Muslim. And, you know, he was just doing crime and stuff and wound up in prison. And in prison, he got exposed to Islam, which a lot of, you know, men did. That was the stereotype, of course, in the 80s where, you know, you were exposed to Islam in prison. Um which he was, and his cellmate at the time was uh, was a cousin of my mother. And on a different path was my mother growing up in, in New Jersey. And um, she converted on her own. She converted on her own. Yeah. Wow. This dude, I don't, you know, through being exposed to Islam. And um, they met, my mother and father met as pen pals from my father being in prison and with her cousin who was like, well, I have a cousin who's looking to, you know, get married or what have you. And they, they, their first interaction was through writing letters to each other as pen pals. And, um, from them, my, my father, you know, he came home and they started a family. Um, so we grew up, you know, in Philadelphia in a very, um, black Muslim community. And why I say that we had different upbringings is because which led me to later in life really wanting to research how Islam was introduced to black people, you know, because Islam at one point in America, the only identity of Islam was through black Muslims. And so Islam was like very strict for me growing up. You know, we lived in communities where, you know, it wasn't, you know, the black Muslims really cleaned the communities up. There was no drugs and, you know, there was no, you know, alcohol, there was no um, abuse. There was no like domestic abuse going on in the homes. This was like stuff that was like vehemently kind of against even during the nation of Islam, you know, when that was like the identity of Islam in America at one point, it was very disciplined where you, you know, you see certain cultures where that stuff is prevalent. You know, you have, um, 
uh, domestic abuse, you have sexual abuse, you may have, there's even certain Muslims around the world that celebrate certain holidays, you know, that may celebrate Christmas or Halloween or what have you. So, you know, we, I grew up in a pretty strict Muslim environment where, you know, it was like you, you know, by it's the book. It's not even strict, man. That, yeah, not even I strict. That, right. When you say it, when you say it, it shouldn't be strict. It's, it's like, strict. that's, that's just... Islam. I grew up, you're right. I grew up in an Islamic environment, the way in which the Islam, you know, we were, you know, indoctrinated with this is how you practice Islam. You don't do things as a Muslims. We have a certain standard, you know, you of know, how we are. You know, what's interesting about what you're saying is that sounds beautiful. You said, like, it cleaned up so many things that it's very difficult. Cops can't even, the government that claims to be the most powerful in the world can't even do what Islam has done it in the communities that you're citing. One of the things that I find so fascinating is when when the government tells us what to do and puts in laws and is strict on us, and this government's one of the strictest, right? We have some of the highest population of adults in, in prisons, over 1%, right? To that, that's law and order, and people love law and order. There's literally a show called Law and Order. Mm. So they model- We're obsessed with it in America. Yeah, exactly. With the, with the, with the idea of it. So when, when a government instills laws on us, we call it law and order and we fantasize about it and love it. But then when Allah does it, when God does it, it's called strict. When What he's doing is actually cleaning up our neighborhoods when the government is even doing that. Hmm. So I, when people always say, oh, you're a conservative Muslim or, oh, you're a, you're a religious Muslim. Oh, you're a strict Muslim. No, I'm a Muslim, right? Like that, that's, yeah. that's what a Muslim is. A Muslim is a, a, someone who's submitted. What do you mean? I'm not going to harass. I'm not going to domestically abuse. I'm not going to. That's not what a Muslim does. Mm. I think we got so far away from that, too. I talk about that in some of my lectures as well, where um, the biggest thing, I think one of the biggest gripes for our generation, um, I don't know how old you are, but, we're, you know, we're a generation or two or within the same kind of realm of generation is our prayers. And our prayers, one of the reasons is that, and I use always the analogy of money because Islam is wealth. That's true wealth, Right. Um, is a child being born into money versus someone having to work hard for it when you get it from the mud, right? There's a different appreciation for it. And for us, our Islam, for my generation, we inherited Islam. We didn't establish it. We didn't get it from the mud like the generation before us, our fathers, you know, our grandfathers, our grandparents that, you know, during a time when it was taboo to be Muslim, you know, they were unapologetically Muslim when it wasn't cool to be. It's cool to be Muslim now. Everybody wear a kufi, everybody wear hijab. It's like, it's, you know, um, but during a time where just like where, where it's cool it might to be black now, we live in a society where Black Panthers, you know, and it's like, but there was a time where that wasn't cool. You know what I mean? It was, it was derogatory. It was, it was, it was sensitive. It was salacious. Um, and so it's interesting that like, you know, what my, what my father and what they really, what, what prayer specifically is that like they established a lot. Where like with money, for example, we just, it was just given to us. And so when I think about my father and how important it was to him, because it's like, we're going to make a presence for this in the world. So I grew up where that was just the identity that I saw visually from my father. My father was unapologetically Muslim. Like he was the epicenter, the example of Islam in our family, hence our community. So uh, he was a part of like one of the, the pioneering Muslims where when you think about maybe how you grew up in your Egyptian communities where there were certain uncles and certain aunties where these were of the community type. Um, so my father was just, he was that. No matter where he went, it was salamu alaikum. He answered his phone. No matter who was on the other end of that phone, salamu alaikum. He's, you know, wearing thobes in the airport. Like we grew up, and this is in the 90s, where if Salat came in and we was on the train, my father, we're making Salat on the, on the L platform. He's not missing prayer. <laughs> no, you know, I grew up in, you know, so, which that was Islam. It was just that we don't, this is, this is my belief, to you be your way, to me be mine. And this room that we sitting in, you know, a lot of the people up on the walls that we're inspired from, from, you know, the Malcolm X's of the world, um, the Muhammad Ali's, the, the, the examples of the black Muslims that stood for um, what they believe. And so that was kind of like indoctrinated in me growing up in, in, uh, in Philadelphia and, and then subsequently led me into a, a comedic path as well.